Hey guys, it's Sick Motion back with the first YouTube video I've done in about a year now, almost exactly a year. The last one I did, I believe, was the preseason patch notes for season eight, which these are the preseason patch notes for season nine. Um, that was the last YouTube video I did. A lot of people were requesting that I start doing these patch note videos again um, and asking why I wasn't putting out content onto YouTube uh, like I used to. I'll go over that briefly really quick since it is my first video back. I'm going to try and keep this video short. I'll throw this in at the beginning and then I'll go through the patch. Also, this patch is going to be a little bit different than usual. I normally was doing the patch note um, readovers and run-throughs before playing it all on the patch. So being that I've played on the patch for two days now, this is less predictions and more about my experiences on the stuff. However, it is still just my opinions on the changes and what they bring. The reason I wasn't doing these patch note reviews for a long time is I didn't have kind of the time and I wasn't putting in the effort to playing League and streaming that I did in the past. So for the past little bit, um, no surprise. I haven't been enjoying playing League as much as I used to, although I am more so now. I've just had a lot going on in my life that kind of League was kind of taking the back burner and the stream was as well, which unfortunately caused... Um, caused when I had to do it if I didn't want to more issues it's a lot a lot of stuff not not really needing to talk about it long story short though um, I'm working on enjoying league a lot more and I'm working on putting a lot more effort into my stream as well for those who might not be aware I am still streaming um, I used to stream at nights which a lot of people uh, we're used to and then I switched to days about a year and a bit ago uh, a little bit before my last uh, YouTube video that I did and um, I'm not able to stream at night anymore which is why I'm doing it during the days um, but I haven't been putting the effort into streaming that I used to um, for the past like year and a bit and I'm, I'm looking to change that looking to put a lot more effort into the streaming hopefully have time to put out more uh, YouTube content as well and nothing like crazy I won't have time to do like like crazy edited videos and I don't have an editor or anything it'll mostly be just kind of highlights from the stream um, like full game highlights like I used to do uh, more than likely and at the bare minimum I'll try and do like the patch note reviews and stuff as well um, reason I stopped doing the patch note reviews is um, I stopped really caring about getting better at League and I stopped really caring about um, staying consistent at League. Um, it kind of, there was a little bit of like resentment towards the game and stuff in the background there as well. But I don't like lying through my teeth. I don't like acting fake or whatnot. So putting my opinions on these patch notes and stuff when I don't feel like I'm really keeping up with the game and following it as much as I used to and as in-depth as I used to, I didn't feel like my thoughts and input on it were really worth it um, even though I had people constantly asking me why I wasn't doing these anymore until they basically stopped asking but as of late um, people have been asking me to start doing it again and I figured hey why not if I'm putting more effort into the streaming I can I can do stuff like this and put stuff like this together as well um, so yeah we'll, uh, we'll read through the patch notes here and um, give you my opinions on them Boop -boop -boo. So this is the preseason patch. Um, they did a hot fix balance update um, already. Dark Harvest. Dark Harvest has been being ran by like everyone. Dark Harvest Karthus has been really, really popular. Um, I won't talk about it as much here as when I go over it, and it's actually in the patch a little further down. But uh, needless to say, it was feeling really, really strong. I think a large part of that is these early game um, preseason games. Um, they're a little bit more Fiesta-ish, and there's a lot more kills, a lot more Team Deathmatch-style play. So the Dark Harvest was really starting to pop off in those games, um, just with the way that it works. Uh, they might revert that, depending on like if it's still good, there's no reason to. But they might um, buff it up a bit again in the future, once the games aren't so focused on kills and whatnot. Um, especially since, in my opinion, the overall patch and uh, theme of the preseason is trying to get games kind of like ending earlier and ways to use early pressure to make a difference in the game rather than having your game stagnate out, which I think is good. Uh, Aatrox, his, I've been playing a lot of Aatrox as well lately, so I've been experiencing this a lot. You definitely feel the two seconds off on the um, total duration of his ult. Uh, you do get more healing. Um, 
when it's not full now. You uh, get the max heal as long as your blood well is 80% filled. So if you die earlier, you still you still get the full healing. Um, what ends up uh, happening with this though is you have less time that you can just freely die. Those extra two seconds actually make a really big difference just in the way that you go in, alt, rotate out a combo, and then you want to rotate out another combo, but you're not going to be safe in your alt that whole time. You end up, I'm not sure exactly how the cooldowns uh, line up or end up, but right, or, right around the time that you're ending your second combo, once you have a lot of CDR later on in the game, your alt's actually ending, so you're going to be at risk of dying if you're low rather than having that safety. So it makes it a lot easier to find openings to fight Aatrox, um, even though it's still somewhat hard. Ezreal, uh, they made Ezreal like AP scale better. Uh, his W has a scaling AP ratio now, and it just does more base damage. Uh, that's nice and all. The big change to this, though, is the damage no longer is reduced by 10% for each enemy hit on the R. The minions and non-epic monsters now take 50% reduced damage, but champions will all take the same amount of damage so that helps uh, AP Ezreal but that also helps normal Ezreal if you shoot someone at the back of a minion wave the ult's still going to be doing damage to them it makes it less wave cleary for the first five minions that you hit but keep in mind that it could drop off to 30 percent um, of the damage if you're clearing like a massive wave the wave clear actually might be still fine you're just not going to be doing as much damage for the first couple targets hit but the big thing here is that it's actually kind of serving that fantasy of like a like a sniper skill if it goes through a lot of stuff on the way it's not bringing down the power of it when you're trying to kill champions from long range which i think is cool uh lissandra got her passive reworked to it no longer gives a free spell every so often it now when an enemy dies near lissandra they become a frozen thrall it basically makes like a bit of a ghost that then tries to run at champions like a little kind of exploding bomb the base damage on it's quite high uh at level 18 it's 520 but at level one it's uh 120 and then there's an ap ratio on it and then there's a slow um when they're next to it so it's harder for them to get away they chase enemies for four seconds before exploding. It's only on champion kills. I know it doesn't say specifically champions in here. It's only on champion kills, and it seems a little unreliable to get kills, um, other than if you're in a team fight and everyone's kind of slowed and CC'd anyway. Uh, the people that die early are going to have those bombs start going off and then kind of domino affecting the rest of the team. be kind of cool to see a fight where it plays out like that. I have not seen um, seen it really used to that full potential yet, however. Um, they changed the cost of her spells as well. They all went down in mana um, because she doesn't get that free spell as uh, often anymore. AP ratio down on a few things as well because of the extra damage she gets from her passive. And the Glacial Path uh, Claw Speed is now faster early and slower later on. The max time or the max distance is still the same. The time to reach max distance is still the same, but it lets you kind of use it to get shorter distances faster, maybe like surprise engage or get over like a really short wall um, with that faster movement speed to start since it'll be further away um, faster. But the the full um, duration of it is still going to be the same. Talia also, I haven't seen her that much. I was seeing a ton of her right at the end of last season. She was really strong and annoying to deal with in the jungle. Uh, but they made it so her Q's a shorter uh, cooldown early, costs a little bit less mana because you'll be spamming it more, but um, everything that you hit, uh, everything takes 50% reduced damage by its stone shards um, beyond the first, not just champions, so her clear speeds are going to be a little bit um, worse. However, they, they did increase the cooldown on it. I think it's just going to keep her less healthy in the jungle um, overall. I, I haven't played jungle, Talia really so i don't really have much to say about it and the workaround duration is no longer affected by cooldown reduction um the mist wasters the, the mist walkers and maiden now draw um minion aggro onto york if they damage a champion which is kind of good and kind of bad i mean if they're damaging champions and york's super super tanky and then the turret starts hitting uh york rather than the minions then those minions will stay alive to keep damaging the champion if you're going in for a turret dive but if you're like early on in lane and you're taking tower shots just because your minions are hitting them and you're just a little bit in range that, that'll kind of be annoying um Dorn shield is actually really nice now um after taking damage from an enemy champion you regenerate uh, up to 30 health over 10 seconds based on missing health so it's 50 percent higher but it's based on your missing health and it's capped at 75 percent missing health um, so I'm not actually sure 
where it would start healing the 20 um, percent, or sorry, the 20 health over 10, what, like it used to. But my experience with the Doran Shield, I've been playing a lot of Aatrox. I was buying uh, Doran Shield on him a lot because it felt like between his um, just passive healing from his E uh, and the Doran Shield passive, it actually kind of helped you stay in lane a, a lot. Uh, Ginsu's got updated. It no longer gives um, on hit damage with an AP and an AD ratio in the flat thing, and like just a lot to read. Um, it just does flat 15 magic damage and now grants um, 6.5 to 15% total magic and armor penetration. So it makes uh, hybrid scaling champions be able to get that magic pen and armor pen, um, which they need. They can't really get magic pen and armor pen in the build with the six items and still make it be efficient. So this kind of adds that. Um, it no longer grants bonus attack damage and ability power per stack, but it still gives you that attack speed. And it still does give you that um, after six stacks, the every second auto applies Han hit effects twice um, passive. Uh, monster gold penalty has been removed um, just by the way that they've kind of been balancing the gold in the game and trading around like all the, the power spikes and stuff uh, in the game. Uh, they felt like they didn't need to stop the funneling as much anymore since there's a lot more ways to strategize and move gold around your team. Uh, Targons, uh, uh, minimum threshold for execute has been increased. Um, so support stuff uh, da, da, da. control wards you can only hold two now instead of three so you can't just load up on control wards and have like a long ass uh, vision battle that just kind of like stagnates out if you start running out of wards you're going to be in trouble because you don't get that extra Th theoretically I mean not everyone on your team is going to have three control wards at the end but that's an extra five control wards that you could have had at like a late game fight assuming that you're it wasn't too late game to have your inventory completely full um the thing I see when I look at that is later on in the game I would buy a ton of control wards when I'm st playing stuff like Jax if I still wasn't max build because that's three ward hops and now it's down to two. Uh, trinket scaling um, is now on level average level of all champs in the game so if you're really far ahead your trinket isn't stronger it's just based on the average level of champions in the game and the ward duration on um, the warding totem has been decreased later on in the game as the game goes on um, based on the average game level. So they're going to provide less like permanent vision later on in the game. Uh, those were kind of like the minor changes. Here are the start, start of the major changes. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have played um, with these new things um, and new changes to the turrets and whatnot so far. So I'm not really going to go like super in depth and explain exactly how they work and what they do. If you haven't seen it, you can go read through this and um, like play a few games. It's pretty self-explanatory once you start getting it. Basically, though, um, you end up getting... There's five plates on the turrets. You Each time you break a plate, you get 160 gold. So you can get a ton of gold in lane by pushing the tower. Um, so having a strong early game, sending your opponent back either through killing them or um, just sending them back in general um, lets you try and take a turret plate. Uh, it punishes people who want to freeze and stay safe under the tower because that huge wave, you can just go and dive that person and uh, if they get pushed out of wave, they're going to miss all those minions as they normally would, but then they, uh, you and if your jungler's there can use that huge minion advantage to start breaking the turret plates and start splitting a bunch of gold between you. It is split by um, nearby champions, and there's no uh, global effect on it, but it's a lot of extra gold if you break all five plates, not including like the turret kill gold or the first blood uh, turret gold if you get that as well. Just breaking all five plates gets you an extra 800 gold on that tower, Every time you break a plate, the tower gets a buff for 20 seconds um, that gives it more armor and magic resistance, so the next plate is harder to kill, so you can't just sweep through all the plates um, right away as easily. Um, and then if you kill the next plate before that um, buff that it gets is gone, it'll re get a second stack on that buff, which doubles it up and reflexes the duration of it as well. And the turret plating falls off at 14 minutes, so it kind of feels like a race to be getting the money from those turrets. Um, because once the the turret plating falls off, the gold that you could get from it, that potential gold, is kind of gone. Um, well, it is gone. Um, so you want to be trying to capitalize on as much of that as you can. Getting all like a lot of turret platings or getting your tower in lane can be strong, and you want to go and help your team get tower platings so that you can uh, get them gold and get them ahead. But at the same time, you don't want to leave your lane after you got the towers um, and like as a top laner perspective, roam and help other lanes 
and have your lane opponent, who's probably behind if you've already taken the tower or have a lot of um, turret plate and gold, and let them just have free roam in the lane. Getting left alone in lane is really beneficial now because you're able to get these turret platings um, quite easily, especially as the game goes on. Your minions start to get stronger, and you start to get stronger and take them off a lot faster. Um, but yeah, that's this. Is, it gives them another objective early to try and pressure games and pressure leads and whatnot, which I think is cool. I think it's needed. Um, it makes the game have a lot more early objectives. Like even if you're super far ahead and you know what to do and your team doesn't, it's really hard to transition your lead on certain champions. Um, it also gives an objective to do when you're behind. Like if you're if you can't help your team and your lane's roaming um, and you're behind, but you're left alone in lane, you might be able to start taking some of those turret platings and getting yourself a little bit of extra gold um, to catch back up. I think it's I think it's interesting. Um, also, once those turret platings fall off, those outer towers at 14 minutes have zero armor and magic resistance. They're absolute paper, so it, it makes the game easier to open up um, on the map and start pressuring. Teams that can defend against Siege very, very well can defend against a team that gets really far ahead early and kind of stagnate games out and draw it out longer, and it's not really that fun of a way to play. So I agree with these changes. I think um, I think it, they're changes in the right direction, for sure. Um the first tower gold in addition to the killing the tower the extra gold that you get from killing that first tower uh, bonus gold is now 150 uh, rather than 300 since you get all of that extra turret plating on the way there um, the outer turrets have uh, 5,000 health because each turret plate is a thousand um, but once they fall off like I said they have no armor or magic resistance uh, the global gold for the inner towers has also been decreased uh, once again you, you get that gold early from the turret platings and you kind of put it into the game you don't need to be just funneling gold out everywhere uh, a lot of the stuff is confusing they changed the inner towers AD scaling they changed the um, the AD caps on the towers they basically get to the higher AD cap early so Diving turrets like feels like really weird. The way they they change like the tower damage, how fast it scales up. Um, they change minion damage and the way it scales, as well as minion movement speed. A lot of things like you can read all of the numbers and stuff, but it's, until you get like an actual feeling for how it plays out in the game, it's really hard to um, get the full feel for what the changes actually do. The best thing you can do is just go and like play around with it. Um, from my experience, the towers hit really really hard. The outer towers die really really quickly and the inner towers actually feel a lot weaker as well even though it says that they didn't um, really change anything other than the AD scaling um, a lot of that might be because the dragon also got changed so that dragons spawn a little bit later but they spawn more frequently five minutes instead of six and the you still get the same bonuses for having three stacks of a dragon but you each dragon isn't worth the exact same amount so having one dragon is worth what uh what one and a half dragons was before um that's later on in the patch but basically you get extra damage from that first earth dragon then you you get more damage than you normally would also because you're kind of getting it feels like you're getting gold from more sources it feels like you're getting items to kill towers faster so towers and pushing feels like feels like it's hard to defend against and it's like it's stuff's getting killed and pushed really fast game times are kind of they're seeming faster for me it might just be because everyone's just playing differently because it's preseason testing stuff out not even testing changes only that have been updated in the preseason people are just playing new champions playing new stuff since ranked um isn't as important uh and winning isn't as important people are taking this time to practice new stuff and just have a fun mess around it's what i've been doing so it's really hard to tell exactly how this is going to scale and once people start playing more seriously and understand the patch and differences um but yeah uh the movement speed bonus on minions uh rather than plus 25 at 20 minutes they gain plus 25 50 75 and 100 each at different thresholds in the game long story short your minions run really really fast so it doesn't take as long for your next wave of minions once they spawn to get to the tower when you're sieging so there's a lot less time spent waiting around where no one really wants to fight anyone else the teams under the tower waiting for the next minion wave to clear your team's waiting for the next minion wave so you can hit the tower um, a lot of the times like missteps and mistakes right there wouldn't be because someone made a good play it would be because someone made a bad play there was no minion waves there someone got impatient and went in for something 
although like the patience and emotional and mental control is part of the game and like part of being a good player it really was frustrating when someone would just kind of lose their cool get bored and then try to go in once you've been playing the game for like 20 25 minutes and that's the way you ended up losing so i like that there's these like checkpoints and stuff to kind of progress games rather than letting them stagnate out um and punishing mistake when a game stagnates out it feels like it punishes a mistake and punishes impatience more than um rewarding the patience and rewarding like proper play so i like the way that these changes are looking uh for right now um they changed um they changed so much stuff on the minions i'm not really going to go over all the numbers and stuff here it would be better to just kind of go through it they changed the way baron buff affects the minions um it's more about honestly just feeling it out throughout the preseason than anything. Uh, the one of the big changes is super minions will now show up on the mini map through fog of war, so you can see one minion uh, super minion waves where they are on the map, and you can know when the last super minion wave is coming. Since once your inhib's about to spawn, the super minion wave stops spawning before the inhib is up, so you can kind of tell when the last super minion wave is without having to guess. Um, well, guess for most players, some some players would have known the timing, but for most players, it was kind of just another RNG factor, in my opinion. Um, the super minions have less AD; they um, attack faster, um, and um, their damage is a little less. No longer increases the minion damage by seventy percent, but still increases the resistances. Um, but keep in mind, the other minions have more damage, so it's kind of weird. Um, it's it's honestly just something you're gonna have to feel out. There's there's so many like minuscule changes, and that's why it's hard to kind of feel out all of the changes at once. There's so many variables that have been changed, all at the same time that it's hard to keep track of what's actually changing, and what's actually affecting what. Um, the epic monster respawn times are shorter. Once again, less time waiting around for stuff. If you need Baron to finish the game, or if you need like um objectives or dragons less time waiting around in lane and more time and more things to defend around the map to push um fights to push um objectives and stuff outside of outside of the lane and just a lot more um goals and objectives on the map so if a team gets really far ahead and they're able to control everything they'll be able to end games faster, but they're going to have to control it well because with how fast everything's spawning and how many objectives there are with the turret platings, just, just with everything with the dragon spawning faster, elders spawning faster, baron spawning faster, it's going to... You're going to have to control everything at the same time very well, and there's a lot more room for comeback in there as well. It's kind of weird to say there's a lot more room for comeback and there's a lot less room to throw the game and have it stagnate out is how it feels it feels good from both sides looking in at what's going on um but yeah the the dragon spawning every five minutes rather than every um they spawn a bit later but every five rather than every six so there's more time to try and go down there and be there for dragons elder dragon spawning way faster later on to capitalize on these early dragons so you can close out the games faster and barons every six minutes as well um the uh, dragon gives you more gold when you kill it and uh, more experience when you kill it. If you didn't need, if you needed any more reasons to go to dragon, there's a little bit more there. This is what I was talking about earlier, though. You can see how um, all of them have, uh, you can get up to three of that dragon. All of them have uh, the same max, 6-6, six, 12-12, six, so on. But the first one is worth more. Um, and this is what I was talking about with the mountain dragon. Uh, damage to structures and epic monsters was 10% with one um, dragon, but now it's 16% with one. Still scales to 30, but rather than getting 10 at the first one, you're getting 60% more. So I think that's why turrets are feeling a little bit squishier, um, just because those early dragon buffs and whatnot are a little more um, important. Jungle camp um, experience changes all values below scale for monsters from level 1 to 7. This stuff just, this just, there's so many variables and there's so many other changes. This stuff just kind of confuses me um, more than anything. And like the changes are like so small and whatnot. And what this will really affect is, um, I guess the junglers are going to be getting a little bit less experience as the game goes on, but everything still is giving the same amount of experience early. So the the strategies and paths for getting certain levels at certain times are still going to be the same, but farming the jungle is a little less rewarding so it i guess it's to pressure jungles out of the jungle to make plays elsewhere i'm not entirely sure but stuff like that just kind of 
those with the minion change with the tower change. There's just so many things being changed at once. It's really hard to keep track of it. How far are we in here? 25 minutes. Ooh, I was hoping to do this a little faster. Anyway, um, big change with the room pages. You no longer have. Um, you no longer get attack speed for going precision no matter what. You no longer get AD or AP for going sorcery no matter what, and so on. You can pick whatever two pages you want the same way that you used to, but then there's three stats to pick from at the end um, where you can choose. Um, it's basically kind of like the old rune system, but you don't have to buy the runes and have rune pages pre-prepared. There's three rows, and you can see the options for each row. Um, the last one's only defensive. The middle one is um, a, um, attack, or uh, sorry, offensive or defensive and the first one is all offense I guess you can count cooldown reduction as defense if you want but some champions would want the attack speed more some champions would want the scaling cooldown reduction more kind of cool that you can get scaling cooldown reduction here while taking transcendence so you can have 20% CDR at level 18 um, without any in your items 25 if you take the um, utility tree one fleet footwork AP ratio um, on the heal has been decreased now that um, you're not going to be pushed from going unfavorable paths um, just based on the fact that you might not want attack speed on an AP champion from going precision you no longer get that attack speed celerity no longer gives movement speed by uh, increase of 1.5 or the damage from it it now increases movement speed bonuses by 8% so it doesn't keep take into account your base movement um, it only takes into account your bonus movement speed sources I don't really know how I feel about this um, for instance, I had Boots 2 on Jax, and I had a Trinity Force for the extra 5% movement speed. I had Celerity, and this is without the Phage proc passive, um, so I wasn't getting uh, like the extra movement speed from that. But just my out-of-combat movement speed with the Trinity Force and Boots 2 on Jax, Celerity was giving me an extra 4 movement speed. So in that situation, it doesn't seem that great, but this will stack with um, Air Dragons and whatnot uh, as well. So... It's more of a choice if you can't obviously control what kind of dragon spawn, but you can take that if you're like planning on playing a champion that's all about movement speed or wanting to kite out a little bit more and you're planning on you have to be planning to build a lot of movement speed items or have a lot of movement speed bonuses in your kit because it doesn't apply on the base. This is what they did to Dark Harvest. Every time you damage a champion below 50% health, your Dark Harvest procs, that's how you make it proc. There's no longer like you know you no longer have to pick up souls from kills or um, cannon minions or jungle monsters or whatnot. It'll just proc if it's off cooldown if you hit them when they're below 50% health. Every time it procs, you'll be getting uh, plus 5 because it's up, it's hot fixed, it's not 8. Um, and the damage is a little bit lower here. There's still an AD and an AP ratio on it. Um, but every time you hit them, it will um, give you that stack. So next time you hit, it'll hit a little bit harder. And it's a 45 second cooldown for the procs and the stacking from the procs but it resets to one and a half second cooldown if you get a kill a lot of people have been playing Karthus and then pressing R and then if you get a kill it resets I'm not sure because all the kills would happen at once I'm not sure if you could get multiple Dark Harvest stacks from one Karthus salt or how that exactly works but it definitely takes it off cooldown right away if you do that um, but I've seen a ton of Dark Harvest Karthuses right away um, and minions and monsters no longer grant souls it's only from hitting champions Ravenous Hunter still works the same, except um, the base healing that you start out with no stacks is 1.5% rather than 2. Uh, Demolish charge up time is a little bit shorter, and the damage is a little bit less um, flat, just because the turret plating, you, you don't want to make the t getting the turret platings too easily. Shield Bash is a new mastery. Basically, um, you gain a little bit of extra armor and magic resistance when you are shielded, mm -hmm. and then as long as you attack someone within two seconds of the shield expiring, you do bonus damage. It has a little bit of flat damage, and then a percentage of the shield strength and your bonus health. Seems all right for tanks, but with the turret plating and whatnot, you're giving up um, having Demolish to take Shield Bash, so it you got to make use out of it, or you might just be wanting the Demolish instead. Uh, bone plating uh, moved down as well. Bone plating is in the second tier, and uh, so, um, what was the one that the one that gives you health, flat health early, and then gives you AD and AP once you have um, four kill participation. Chrysalis, right there, I guess. That's been removed. Uh, bone plating basically um, took its place because um, it got moved down. Uh, the bone plating buff duration is one and a half seconds rather than three, so it lasts. It saves you in the trade for a shorter duration if like you just take one tick of damage 
and then that person waits a second and a half to do more, uh, the bone plating is not going to do that much. But since it lasts a little bit shorter, it gives you more block amount early. It's just about capitalizing in the shorter period of time. The reason they removed chrysalis is because you can choose your flat health um, and flat damages and whatnot out of your runes. The stats that you get from your uh, pages are no longer tied to the trees that you pick, so they felt like they didn't need that anymore. Uh, overgrowth now gives flat health rather than percentage health, but once you have 120 minions under your belt, you gain an additional 2.5% um, max health. So you do get that percentage health for tanky characters, but it also gives you flat health for squishier characters. Um, you'll get 30 extra health per 80 minions that die near you. So like 240 CS, you're getting an extra 90 health, plus you have that extra 250 uh, or 2.5% max health as well. So it's actually kind of nice um, for both tanks and non-tanks alike. Klepto feels pretty broken right now. They made it so it, it works the exact same as it used to, pretty much, except when you use an ability to proc Klepto, you get two Klepto stacks rather than one. At first I thought it was you get two, um, chances to proc it because these stacks get wasted on minions as well. So if you proc your Klepto, then auto a minion, you've lost that Klepto charge from that ability cast. Um, and then you just had two chances to proc it instead of one, so it didn't punish you for auto attacking a minion after a spell. But no, you get to proc Klepto on both of them, rather. Um, so I've been playing and messing around with a little bit of a Lowey, kind of fun. Um, one person that I saw abusing Klepto really hard was Lucian. Every time he outcasts an ability, he gets two auto attacks instantly, and both of those auto attacks would proc Klepto, which was pretty ridiculous. Wards no longer drop after 20 minutes since your inventory is kind of full anyway. You're just RNG getting vision spots around the map, which was could make or break games if you had a ward randomly somewhere that you shouldn't have because you got a Klepto proc there. I agree with that. Item drop rates decrease to account for the additional proc per spell cast. I don't really know if the item... It, it kind of feels weird. I was playing a Lowey, I got a Klepto proc, and I proc both of them, and I got two bags of gold off my first two Klepto procs since the new changes. But then, in the next like 15 minutes, I only got two more bags of gold. It was, it was really weird. Um, but yeah, Klepto... A lot of people are experiencing and testing out Klepto on different champions. It's important to not fall into the trap of taking Klepto on everyone just because it's fun and it's like a, like a good fantasy type thing because there's just champions that are going to do better with other masteries. Like if you're taking Klepto on someone who would rather take Conqueror and then you don't have that true damage later on, all the stuff that you proc from Klepto is not going to make up for the, cha um, the problem that you don't have that true damage on like a tank. Uh, bounties. Um, kill bounties increased at 4 plus kills, minion and monster gold um, now factors into bounties as well. So if you're just straight up dying a ton of times, but you're still farming and you're relevant to your team, you're going to be relevant on the bounty bar because that's going to be giving you bounties as well. Um, the bounties will stack up quicker. So when you're really far ahead, it's important and you have a lot of kills or you have a high bounty, it's important to not play really carelessly because you're going to just let the enemy team catch up a lot easier. The highest you can get um, from a kill, like with the bounties, you can get a thousand gold from the bounty. But if the person was doing well enough that they would have been worth more than a thousand gold without that cap, whatever is left over is going to be still on them for the next time they die. So it's going to punish you for getting ahead, but then playing carelessly afterwards. It makes comebacks a lot easier, but in order to get the comeback, you have to kill the player that's doing well. So it's going to be less punishing to a player doing well, but his team doing bad because he's in control of his character, if that makes sense. Whereas a lot of times, like a lot of games last season felt like the game was decided by the player that was playing the worst on the losing team rather than the player that was playing the best on the winning team, which is not a fun way to experience the game because it's all out of your control. It just felt like a slot machine. Um, bounties now over 150 gold will be visible on the scoreboard. You just pull up the scoreboard and you can see who's worth money on their team so you don't have to try and keep track of all of that. I think that's cool. Um... But yeah, that's might have left something out, but that's basically that. Uh, minimum kill gold is now, for someone's hard feeding, is now 100. Um, it doesn't go down after 6 deaths. It stays at 100, rather than like at 9 deaths you're giving 50 gold. Uh, I mean, it, that's not really that much of a difference. Uh, channel duration on teleport is decreased by half a second from four and a half seconds to four seconds so you get to where you're going faster really weird timing spells when someone's teleporting into lane lately because you're timing it for the like just your muscle memory of four and a half seconds and they're getting there half a second faster so a lot of times i'm missing the spells it's kind of weird 
Um, you're also going to get to fights and stuff faster when you're teleporting in. Teleport, however, can no longer be cancelled, so you can no longer bluff out a teleport just to stop the enemy team from pressuring and having to respect the fact that you could teleport down there, as well as you're no longer going to be able to cancel a teleport if you see that your reason you were teleporting is no longer needed and your team's fine or whatever. So I'm finding myself hesitating a lot on the teleports because I don't want to commit myself to teleporting, especially when I could stay in lane and be getting um, turret uh, plating gold and whatnot. I, I'm very hesitant to be leaving my lane. Um, and I'm using my teleport to get to my lane a lot more to be trying to pressure turret plates as well as defend my own. So it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds. Um, other than that, everything else isn't really um, changes on the patch. Uh, I tried to get through that as quick as I can. Went further and l longer than I wanted it to, but I mean, it's a huge patch. The preseason patches are always very, very um, long. So I think this was one of my shorter ones, honestly. And with me talking for a couple minutes at the beginning about not the patch, it's a little shorter than I... Than the uh, what is it at 36 minutes almost um, basically what I what I see is it looks like they're trying to stop games from stagnating out based on either the team that's winning unable to push because of like their team comp be unable to a, a lot of it comes down to people being unable to end games because your teammates are not wanting to participate um, and play as a team and do stuff and you need like your whole team there to end it um the minions and pushing and stuff is a lot more uh, fluid with that. There's a lot more objectives up around the map, so people that are turtling out and hiding under their towers aren't going to be able to do that as much anymore. It's going to force them to come out or lose a bunch of advantages. In competitive play, um, getting map control and whatnot is a lot easier. Um, so you forcing people off their tower and whatnot was uh, a little harder for them to do because the team that's in control like has a lot of vision stays in control but in solo queue and in non-competitive not everyone's an all-star player so making it easier to end out and close out games is a lot better no one wants to be stuck in a 45 50 minute game every single game it's it, it gets to be really annoying especially when a lot of the times like people in those games aren't having fun you have someone like trolling you or you have someone like just being a dick in general and you're stuck in like the escape room with them and it turns into the um, dilemma of you no longer care about winning or losing you just want to get out of the game as fast as possible because you don't want to be playing with that player anymore <laughs> um a lot of the times you end up winning those games just because the enemy team ends up screwing up because the game delays out to a point where the death timers are long enough that the team one team makes a mistake and then it's all over like that that's not a fun way to to lose either um just like one misstep whether you made you made it or not or whether like the other team like capitalized on it it's not a fun way to to play the game out um and just be like drained for playing for 40 minutes and have the game end like that i think making more ways to progress the game and um, to develop the game earlier rather than um, just kind of waiting for opportunities, being able to play the game proactively rather than reactively. I think that's a step in the right direction. So I'm feeling positive on that. Um, but I'll leave the video at that. Um, and with that, like feeling positive about the patch note changes as well, I'm feeling more positive about playing the game. And a lot of that, a lot of that's just coming like I'm, I'm focusing on enjoying it more, but I'm enjoying it more in general as well. Like I said at the beginning, I'm going to be putting more effort into my stream. Uh, putting more effort into my stream also means be putting more effort into League since that's the game that I stream and that's the game that people have want to watch me play and have watched me play for so long. So I'm looking at, um, I'm not at back, I'm not at the level of play that I used to be. I'm working on trying to get back to that level of play. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with the preseason in my own play on stream is I'm just trying to trying to improve on stuff, trying to kind of train back up to the level I was at and trying to uh, learn sp um, and improve on like my weak areas, learn new champions, learn new matchups. And even when I'm not streaming, um, I've been spending time like watching videos and stuff, learning how to play against champions, learning how to just like small like tips and tricks and videos and stuff. I had a, when I was streaming a lot in the past, I was doing a lot of like kind of helping players develop and um, teaching uh, players how to play the game. And I stopped doing that. Um, some of that was because I wasn't enjoying the game as much, but because I wasn't enjoying the game as much, I was letting my skill deteriorate and I, I didn't feel comfortable and I felt really fake trying to tell players what to do when I myself wasn't really doing it. And it got to a point where like, I didn't really know like the best like tips and tricks and like ways to progress the, um, and help players out because I stopped caring about keeping up with it myself. So I stopped kind of trying to share it. So hopefully get back to the point where, um, 
kind of being an informative stream um, to an extent as well because if I'm if I'm trying to improve and I'm kind of getting back to my level of play I'll be sharing that knowledge as well uh, so we'll see how it goes out uh, I'll try and keep the video under 40 minutes here I got 12 seconds to close out so thanks for watching guys hopefully do some more patch notes like this in the future I'll, I'll try at minimum to stay up with the patch notes um, and we'll see if we end up getting some full replays on the YouTube channel as well and uh, I'll still be streaming every day like I have been with my new stream times. The stream times are on my page, so you can check that out. Go to the stream page and see what those times are for you if you haven't checked out the stream in a long time. Um, one thing I'm hoping is that this video reaches some viewers that might have thought that I stopped streaming or stopped playing or stopped doing the YouTube in general that were more active on the YouTube, um, and they might be able to go check out the stream even if the new times don't work for them. All the videos are still going to be archived for, I think, 30 or 60 days, so you can always go and check out um, the, the replays on stream as well. Take it easy, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.